Scrubbing duty again? Oh, God. What do you want of me? Again and again and again. Oh, Lyrian Lummoxes. Is a waste of time for one like me. This could hurt. No? Ah. Blood washes away all shim! Must be an important lesson in this. But what? Kerzer!
for that. Go on, Enkazel! As the Lyrians passed a cemetery marching along its ivy-covered wall, they heard mourners wailing pitifully to a priestess's moving song. The soldiers dutifully lowered their heads. Their minds sought out fallen comrades and kin, and they wondered whom else the war would yet claim. <coughs> Listen, said Gascon, stirring me from her own meditation. I think I'll veer off for a bit. What for? To offer your condolences? In a manner of speaking. But just go on. I'll rejoin you soon. Meave nodded, spurred her mount, and rode on. By nightfall, Gascon had indeed rejoined the force. Ignoring his companion's inquisitive looks, he simply sat and stared fixedly into the fire. Meave thought Gascon would explain his absence or at the very least devise a witty excuse for absconding. But he never uttered a word. You need my help with anything? Anything at all, I've ideas aplenty. Long you've travelled, Barnabas. The wonders you must have seen. Likely visited many exotic lands before you reached Mahakam. Oh, Corvia, yes. Matina, yes. Nazir, doubly. Zerikania, gods, yes. And Korath, even. I mean, such beauty there, though. Hot. Oh, dreadfully so. Horrible place to grow turnips, if you've ever a mind to try. Novigrad. Lived there a spell as well, but I didn't much care for it. Why ever not? The Hierarch. Intractable man. Banned one of my inventions, condemned it as unholy, vile, etc., etc. Decided he would burn both of us at the stake. As you can imagine, we had a difference of opinion in that regard. <laughs> Perhaps I shall regret this, but do tell. What was the thing you created exactly? <laughs> I knew you'd be interested. You've a curious mind, dear Queen. We're two peas of a feather. Quite the clever contraption it was. Made for a widow, wealthy, but aching with longing. In her husband's absence, tormented by unfulfilled needs. Stop right there. I knew I'd regret asking. And see, it had this special crank that when rotated... Barnabas, no, enough. As you command, Your Majesty. But if you ever get the urge to see it, I've the prototype still tucked away in my trunk. Noted. But by the gods, please, let's change the subject. Time I attended to other matters. Hmm? Ah, yes, you're still here. Off you go then. Good mother. Granted eternal peace. Oh. 
Why have they left us? Milka, why? Move that candle. To the left. No, no, Aya. Oh, why have they left us? Milka, why? Yes? I think you'll really like this one! <laughs> Have it the white of an eye from our believe away. A grotto dum anime is No? Ah. Important lesson in this, but what? My prescription, a bit of bloodletting. Hundred and one, hundred and two, hundred and three. Bigger they are, easier they are to touch. Uh -huh. Be 
discipline. That's what you folk lack. about slings, they hide well. Hundred and fifty two, hundred and fifty four. My goodness, I've got sand up plenty in the room.
The Devil's Tower. We draw near, Your Grace. No sign of villain yet, far as I can see. Unsurprising. Prompt he never was. The Queen had chosen to meet Willem at Devil's Tower, and not without purpose. The structure stood on an aisle, so no foe could approach without first exposing themselves on a narrow bridge. The isle had little vegetation midst which to conceal a large force. A small unit could evade detection. Altogether, not much to fear. No escorts were your terms, began Gascon, with a hint of mischief. But better safe than sorry, I always say. What are you suggesting? Yours truly, and four chaps, behind the walls. Give a signal, any signal, and we'll leap to your side. Meave struggled with her conscience. There was no honor in Gascon's plan, but prudence, certainly. In the end, she nodded in agreement, though not without compunction. Willem arrived soon after, the heavily armored cavalry he had in tow clearly there to boost his courage. He left them at the foot of the bridge and rode across alone. A stiff wind from the river nearly made off with his ermine fur cloak. Willem and the mother who'd borne him stood face to face. They gazed into each other's eyes, waiting to see who would look away first. When neither did, Meave broke the silence. Time flies, and I have a kingdom to liberate. No need to drag this out. What's this about? Tell me. I thought my messenger already did. Oh, he did. And how? Willem I wishes to arrange a truce. Only, Willem I is in no position to parley on an equal footing. Willem I can, at most, offer his unconditional surrender because Willem I's losing this war. Yes, Mother. I am. And I see that by losing I've at last made you content.
Willem. We do not meet as mother and son. We meet only as leaders of two armies at war. Can you separate the two? Truly? I must. If only not to lose my mind. I see. Then let us parley. I'm losing, you say. And you're right. But I haven't lost yet. And have no intention to surrender. I am ready, however, to renounce my fealty to the Empire and pledge my forces to you. As long as you fulfill my conditions. Mm-hmm. Let me hear them. First, you will not rescind the reforms I've authorised already, any of them. Second, you will guarantee both my safety and that of my advisers. Third, I shall remain your heir and next in line for the throne. Impudent child. Insolent beyond all measure. Well, I had to try. Goodbye, Mother. And may you... Hold. I didn't say I reject them. <clears throat> it's come my turn to listen. You're impertinent, Willem. As you should be. Any future king must be certain of himself and his judgments. Rely on none but himself. I... Thank you. I never suspected... I'm not done. Time now you heard my conditions. You shall remove crown and royal cloak. You shall labour from dawn till dusk. And you shall fight at the fore in every battle. Is that clear? Yes. Yes, Your Majesty. It's settled then. Now the road beckons. Willem bowed, turned and walked away. Meeve followed, still angry, though she could not stifle a smile. Soon thereafter, Meeve's army set out towards Rivia Castle. It would not be long now before the decisive battle. <laughs>